What happened to Dion? Dion was born in the Bronx, New York, to an Italian American family, and he also developed a passion for country, blues, and doo wop music during his childhood. He honed his singing skills on the streets and in local clubs of the Bronx with other aspiring singers. In 1957, he auditioned for Bob and Gene Schwartz, who convinced him to record a song arranged by Hugo Montenegro. Initially hesitant, Dion's single The Chosen Few was released as Dion and the Timberlanes and found regional success. The Belmonts, Carlos Mastra Angelo, Fred Milano, and Angelo DeLeo were signed by Bob and Gene Schwartz. The Bronx neighborhood of Belmont inspired the name of the vocal ensemble. They joined forces with Dion taking the lead vocals. The new group's breakthrough came in early 1958 when I Wonder Why on the newly formed Laurie Records made number 22 on the Billboard Hot 100. Their initial hit was followed by No One Knows and Don't Pity Me which also charted on the Billboard Hot 100. Due to their success, Dion and the Belmonts were invited to join Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, The Big Bopper, Frankie Sardo, and other performers on the disastrous The Winter Dance Party Tour. On February 3rd, 1959, Holly and others chose to charter a jet to the next site rather than ride the tour bus. Dion was asked to join the group, but he declined because the $36 trip cost was the same amount his parents had been paying for his childhood apartment each month, making him feel guilty for indulging. Roger Peterson, Holly, Valens, and Richardson were all killed in the disaster along with the other passengers. Frankie Sardo and Dion completed the tour and Holly was replaced at the very next show by Bobby V, who was unknown at the time. Later, Jimmy Clanton, Frankie Avalon, and Fabian were introduced to take the place of the other headliners who are now deceased. Dion and the Belmont's next single, A Teenager in Love, was released in March 1959. It eventually reached number 5 on the Billboard Hot 100 and number 28 in the UK. The group's biggest hit, Where or One, was released in November of that year and reached number 3 on the Billboard Hot 100. However, Dion entered a hospital in the early 1960s for his heroin addiction, a problem he had been dealing with since he was in his mid-teens. The group's subsequent single releases that year fared less well. Dion departed the Belmonts in October 1960 to pursue a solo career due to musical, interpersonal, and financial issues. All eight of Laurie's releases had reached the Hot 100 chart by the time of their breakup. By the end of 1960, Dion produced his first solo album on Laurie Records called Alone with Dion, released in 1961. The single Lonely Teenager rose to number 12 on the Billboard Hot 100. The name on his solo releases was simply Dion. Follow-ups Having Fun and Kissing Game had less success, and the signs were that Dion would drift into the cabaret circuit. However, he then recorded an up-tempo number with a new vocal group, the Dell Satins. The record Runaround Sue stormed up the Billboard Hot 100, reaching number 1 in October 1961 and number 11 in the UK, where he also toured. Runaround Sue sold over a million copies, achieving gold disc status. For the next single, Laurie promoted the A-side, The Majestic, but it was the B-side, The Wanderer, which received more radio play and climbed swiftly up the charts to reach number 2 on the Billboard Hot 100 in February 1962 and number 10 in the UK. The 1976 re-release made the UK Top 20. By the end of 1961, Dion had established himself as a great celebrity. He had performed all over the world and appeared in the musical movie Twist Around the Clock. 
produced by Columbia Pictures. In 1962, he followed with a string of singles he wrote or co-wrote, including Lovers Who Wonder, which went to number three, Little Diane, which went to number eight, and Love Came to Me, which reached number ten. He also had successful albums with Runaround Sue and Lovers Who Wonder. Dion switched from Laurie to Columbia Records at the conclusion of 1962. He was the label's first rock and roll artist to be signed, which was unusual given that Mitch Miller, the A&R director at the time, detested that specific style of music. Their first Columbia single, Jerry Lieber and Mike Stoller's Ruby Baby, originally a hit for the Drifters, reached number two while Donna the Prima Donna and Drip Drop, another remake of a Drifters hit, both reached number six in late 1963. Dion also performed an Italian version of Donna the Prima Donna, using identical backup vocals. His subsequent Columbia recordings were less popular and a period of economic collapse was brought on by issues with his drug addiction and shifting public tastes, mainly the British invasion. Dion's musical direction changed toward traditional blues after returning from a European tour, influenced by Columbia's John Hammond. He recorded blues-oriented songs like Willie Dixon's Hoochie Coochie Man and Spoonful, but these releases, some produced by Tom Wilson with Al Cooper on keyboards, did not achieve commercial success. In 1965, he formed a new group, The Wanderers, and recorded self-pinned tracks. He also recorded Bob Dylan's It's All Over Now, Baby Blue in June 1965. In 1966 and 1967, Dion briefly made a reunion album with the Belmonts called Together Again, which had limited success in the U.S. but did better in the U.K. During this time, they appeared on TV shows like The Clay Cole Show. Despite a career that seemed to be winding down, Dion still had enough credibility to be one of only two rock stars featured on the Beatles' Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band album cover in 1967. In April 1968, Dion experienced what he identified as a powerful religious transformation. After getting clean once again from his heroin habit, an experience he documented in his 1970 song, Your Backyard, he approached Laurie Records for a new contract. They agreed on the condition that he recorded the song Abraham, Martin, and John, written by Dick Holler, also the writer of the Royal Guardsman Snoopy vs. the Red Baron. In response to the assassinations of JFK, MLK, and RFK. The success of this song released by Dion in August 1968 and later recorded by many other artists including Marvin Gaye, reached number 4 on the Billboard Hot 100 and number 1 in Canada, reviving Dion's career. It sold over 1 million copies and was awarded a gold disc. For the next few years, Dion's music became radically different, moving to more mature material. He released several albums essentially as a singer-songwriter to moderate sales moving to the Warner Brothers label in 1969. In 1972, Dion and the Belmonts had a live reunion show at Madison Square Garden, recorded and released as the album Reunion Live at Madison Square Garden in 1973. They performed together again in 1973 at Nassau Coliseum, but no recording surfaced. In 1975, Dion released Born to Be With You, produced by Phil Spector, which didn't do well commercially, but received praise from artists like Jason Pierce and Pete Townsend. In 1978, Dion released Return of the Wanderer, drawing from his teenage influences but also faced commercial disappointment. In 1979, Dion experienced a spiritual transformation, becoming a born-again Christian, 
and his subsequent recordings focused on contemporary Christian music. He released several albums on the Day Spring Records label, including I Put Away My Idols in 1983, which charted at number 37. Dion's Christian music earned him recognition, including a GMA Dove Award nomination and a Grammy Award nomination. He continued to make special appearances like a Radio City Music Hall concert in 1987, which led to collaborations with artists such as Bruce Springsteen, Paul Simon, and Lou Reed. Dion also co-authored his autobiography, The Wanderer, Dion's Story in the Late 1980s. In 1989, Dion returned to rock music with the contemporary album Yo Frankie, which included appearances by Simon, Reed, Katie Lang, and Brian Adams. In 1989, Dion was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with an introduction by Reed. It caused some controversy when the other Belmonts were not inducted and it was just a solo induction for Dion. Dion's musical journey continued with various projects and releases over the years. In 1996, he formed the band Little Kings with members from Dell Lords and the Smithereens, leading to a live album in 2001. He released The Best of the Gospel Years in 1997, followed by albums like Deja Nu in 2000, where he covered Bruce Springsteen and even joined him on stage in 2002. Dion's career highlights include induction into the Grammy Hall of Fame in 2002 for Runaround Sue and a series of live recordings and performances. He ventured into blues and country with albums like Bronx and Blue in 2006, which was nominated for a Grammy and Tank Full of Blues in 2012. His collaboration with various artists, including Paul Simon, continued. In 2020, Dion released Blues with Friends, reaching number one on the Billboard Blues Albums chart and garnering critical acclaim. He also released notable Christmas songs and received a Blues Music Award nomination in 2021. In 2021, he released Stomping Ground, another number one blues album. And in 2023, Rolling Stone recognized Dion's talent by ranking him at number 154 on its list of the 200 greatest singers of all time. And as of the recording of this video in late September 2023, Dion is still alive and well. And that's what happened to Dion. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe if you haven't already, give me some facts about Dion that I failed to mention in this video, and it's so good that legends like him are still alive from the early 60s, and like I said, as of the recording of this video in late September 2023, he is alive and well at the age of 84. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.